and try to take the damage. Bring the screen door, please. The United States of America, interior public court stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Please guide us as we make wise and form decisions for the good of the borough residents. Also, please keep the military and first responders safe. Amen. Amen. Okay, I need to the a free chair. Chair. Quite over. Go. Okay. Minutes. Uh, there's a meeting April 8th. Regular scheduled meeting April 16th. Another one scheduled May 1st for the vacancy board minutes is presented and written for the room of roll reading the order. Uh, or read out reading out loud. Like roll call. Make a motion. Make a motion. Ted, can we have a motion, please? Just a motion for the minutes. I'll make a motion. Brett? Second. Dave. Roll call. Jennings. Yes. Williams. Yes. Preston. Aye. Neely. Aye. COVID. No. George, before you go to Bills, can you announce the three meetings under the where you did the Pledge of Allegiance? Oh, yeah. the three that were held. announce an executive session with extra meeting held April 16th, special council meeting uh, April 16th, an executive session, fire contract, May 1st, vac vacancy board meeting. Okay, Bill with Mr. Neely, Mr. Preston. Can I have a motion to accept, please? I'll make a motion. Sign. I'll second. Uh, roll call. Coble. Aye. Williams. Aye. Neely. Aye. Jenny. Aye. Preston. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Visitors, please give name, address, organization you, which you represent. Three minutes, please. Who's first? Okay. Go ahead, ma'am. I'm Megan Palmer, 198 Southside Road, Camp, Pennsylvania, 17724. Um, I've brought this up before at a council meeting and nothing's necessarily been addressed to it. Um, about the police department, like what are we doing? Because at this point it sounds like officers are leaving, nothing's changing, nothing's getting got done. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So you guys could essentially put forth more cadets, but if things aren't changing here, how are you going to keep them to stay? I mean, we're all part of a community, our, uh, the, uh, the security guard that's currently at the school, their contract ends this year to be your grant. I can't tell you what the school's gonna do, I don't know. But if we don't have a police force, what's who's gonna protect the town? What's gonna happen? And it's just something needs to be done, and I don't know who to address it to, but it's just to the point where it's it's getting redundant. I fully agree with you one hundred percent. So something needs to be done. I don't know. I'm not on the police force you have, or police committee. You'd have to take it up with Dean, Dave, and Mr. Seeley, but I agree. Something needs to be done. Um, we need to get a new police chief in here. To go from there. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir, Brian. Well, I have a couple of things to go over. Uh, the Brian Christ owns several properties here in Canberra. Uh, lived there just outside of the borough in Camp Township. Uh, at the last council meeting, a question was asked about the Canton Warrior sign on my property just south of town, and somehow the conversation got switched, but a comment was made about me that I avoid getting permits and applying for permits, and I'm like that with all my businesses. Well, for instance, 25 Troy Street, I'm going to put in a small arcade, a couple billiard tables, pinball machines, you know, a place in, for local people to have a yard sale and stuff, kind of make it a community little thing, just Tell my semi retirement later on. <coughs> I called Bradford County Codes. They came, inspected the building, mailed me the permits and everything. I received notification from Camp Burrell saying I needed to rezone the property as it was zoned for a restaurant. Well, it was not. I don't know who checked into that. I have them in case zoning. It is for retail, which I should have been fine. Um, but they wanted $300 for me to rezone it, and it was already retail. So I just kind of dropped that. I'm not spending that to put in a little thing like that. It take a while to recoup any money. As far as up to K&K, &K, I rent H&R Block, which is right next to my garage up there. 
and they wanted to put a new sign on the face of their building and replace the older version with a new LED. They did all the permitting and everything, as far as I know, it was all gotten. I talked about putting the old face with new face on in front of my building at K&K &K for 911 addressing system and K&K &K whatever just to utilize that sign. But I was told in an email by the pictures provided, it shows the total square footage of 32.76 and the maximum allowed is 32 square feet. From the pictures, they measured that. I was not shut down that sign. I decided not to do it. By the time I went through the variances, the permitting, paying for the sign, I've got the property up for sale. I didn't want to invest that much money in the signage at that time. <coughs> and also up to the car wash. I want to do unit, uh, rental units behind that. I did get permitting. I uh, talked to John and he gave me the applications and stuff. I wrote up check number 2146 and now $150 sent it with Dean down here to this office for the proper permitting. That was for permanent storage. Somehow I forgot to put in rental. Same building. But then when it came back I needed to resubmit the applications. And I'm sure there have been more costs or something to that. I don't know. But that time I sent an email asking to revoke and forget all for permitting that I asked for and paid for. I'm just, all my properties are up for sale, so I'm not putting that much more into them, I'm just going to kind of let them go. The last thing I have, there's a lot of controversy on the lawyer sign on my property down below town. Mr. Vanderpool originally asked, but mind you, if they, the warrior country sign could be taken down, redone, stuff like that. And I said, yes, yeah, so it would be beautiful, I mean, make it nice, they're going to do all three of them. The only issue I had, and I didn't have, didn't mind at all, I gave him permission to move forward with it. I also asked for a, a little bit of assurance that I wouldn't get fined, because remember like nine years ago, I got fined for an office trailer. They fined me $2,900 for a temporary uh, office trailer on that same land. I didn't want to go through that again. Just give me something that you're not going to find me or DEP can't find me or come back. It's okay to take it down, redo it and put it back up, the existing sign. They did give me a agreement that they wanted me to sign, and I read it, and I didn't really want to agree. I put it aside, I forgot about it for quite a while. Dean had mentioned a couple other times. I finally pulled out, took it to my lawyer. He's like, don't sign that. It says right on that agreement, there's an erection of wooden sign, like three times, and also uh, must take sole possession of that sign. That is a uh, memorial sign for a, a person, Ronnie Mommer. Um, it's a memorial sign. I am not taking possession of that because everybody in the community that donated to that sign at the time of his passing, owns a piece of that sign. It's not proper for me to take ownership, sole ownership of that sign. Also, it's down numerous times that it's a erection of a new sign. It's not. It's just replacing. But I just want a little coverage on my end that I wouldn't get surprised with a fine like I did before <coughs> when I thought I was helping the borough by putting the trailer there. There's a lot of controversy over it. I just didn't want to go through that again. Pretty plain and simple, but. I would like to have that sign picked up. I'll pick it up. I've got 200 people right now that would offer to help put that sign back up because it needs to go back up. It is a memorial sign for our area, not my sign, community sign. I mean, I don't think it's too much to ask. I just don't want to find it. So that's really all I have right now. But All right. So, David, what do we got to do so he can put that sign back up? The, uh, sign, the, the, the warrior sign, correct. Uh, well, we have an agreement that uh, the, uh, the, I think the, uh, the borough would uh, erect it, the borough would maintain it, but the landowner has uh, legal uh, ownership. No. Uh, no, that agreement says that I take sole ownership of it. Has anybody else read that agreement in here? No. Except the person who wrote it. We have like copies of it. I have extra copies. I've got a copy here. It basically says, whereas the borough desires to erect three such signs along three separate roadways which access the town of Canton, whereas the landowner agrees to the erection of one said sign on its property and agrees to take legal possession of said sign, whereas the borough agrees to be solely responsible for the maintenance of said sign while landowner consents to the entry by the borough street department employees upon its property to provide said maintenance. Wherefore the parties, through the mutual promises and covenants, agree to the following terms and conditions. The borough may erect a wooden sign bearing the Canton Ware emblem on landowner's uh, property. Landowner shall hold legal possession of said sign. The borough shall assume sole responsibility of maintaining said sign. Landowner consents. 
to entry by the Borough Street Department employees onto its property for the purpose of maintaining said sign. I disagree with all four of them because... Okay, but Brian, you don't have to. You no, don't I'm going to just say it. I'm just clarifying. Nobody else has read that. I do have copies here if anybody wants them. I request a point of information. Uh, Mr. Brand, was there more than one sign taken down? Yeah. There's, yeah, three three signs. there's three signs. There's three signs. Yeah, two in the township and, and one listen, in the borough. And, and two people agreed. Three people agreed. Then Brian decided not to, and that's fine. It's his right. Right. Two people did. Okay. And they signed that. And um, I, I don't know if the signs are up. Yet. Well, no. one's how up. can he take possession of something he doesn't know? What? You can't just take it away from the memorial and give it to him. I'm sorry. That sign is a memorial from Ron Mor Ron Muffer. You can't just take that and give it to somebody. This I don't know. Is that the old sign? Is that what you think? Is that what you're well, that's the yeah. original sign. Right. Okay. Yes. And that's what we talked about. Right. Just if it's on a person's property, it by law it has to belong to that person. Uh, I interject. Uh, my neighbor, the Canton, welcome to Canton Borough sign on Thad Woodward's property. Mm -hmm. uh, my understanding that belongs to the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, well, okay, somebody has to take possession. Yes. You know, we can't say the town because somebody has but, to give us permission. But the landowner doesn't necessarily have to own, have to own that. Well, they, okay, so somebody, I, a, a group, a person, a, you know, if, he, if they want to, I, I guess Brian could start a Mockburn Memorial LLC would the and borough, they could take possession of it. Would the borough be, a, be would they uh, take ownership? I don't know if the, I'm not sure they can actually be honest with you. I, I just don't know if they can do that. I mean, once you put a structure on somebody's property, it's their property, and uh, if, if there's anything that's considered a fixture, it would be uh, considered their property. I'm not sure how you how you can get around that. They can't lease that space. That should have been well, done. Well, it has been done for 20 some been, years. Correct. It should have been done at the installation of the sign. It should be now grandfathered in. It belongs to, I'm going to say, Montbury family or community. I mean, I allowed the borough to come in there one time, take it out. I thought it was a great idea. I'm not giving permission every time to come on my property. You go down and drive a nail or something in there, paint it who put, without permission. Who put the sign up? It was put up 30 some years ago, approximately 93. I correct me. Well, who, who put I it? Think, I think Brad. My Brad brother Mommer. Brad. Okay. Brad Mommer. Brad Mommer and Larry Wilcox. And Larry Wilcox. Two, okay. two in the American Legion. There were right. num numerous people names that come up to put the sign up. Okay. It was allowed to be put on the land then, which is well before I owned it. And before I owned it, it was put up. I allowed it to remain there because it's nice and it's a good, great idea to get it redone. I think it was great that I, I guess Dave Ward paid for the signs. So from what I hear, he well, donated the money. Was, and some other businesses. Yeah, I shouldn't say Dave Ward. Other businesses. Board. Pay for the redoings of the sign, which is great, but it's a one time thing. Why not do it for 10 more years, 12 years? I, I would like to say that I appreciate the efforts that's gone into restoring them. I can't do it single handedly. Right, right. And <clears throat> it's. It's just been difficult to think that there's been this much controversy over something that was. It really doesn't need to have any conversation. doesn't need to have exactly. conversation. And, and when I started this, I didn't think there would be. I, I mean, what, two of them have tipped over a couple of times. No one was taking care of them. They, they were in terrible condition. You know, I had five businesses here in town that were willing to shell in money. The school was willing to do the work. I didn't think it would be that big a deal. You know. Did if you? I if I could take that back to the condition that it was, and you know, because the other two landowners are great with it, they think it's a wonderful thing, and I mean, I'm sure principals, lawyers went over that contract left and right, and they had no problem with it. They're in the township. 
Uh, and principal's lawyers, Dean, did not get a copy of that letter. I talked to uh, management at principal, and they know nothing of the letter. They should have well, a copy the here. Owner about about signed, so they got them back. <laughs> they should produce a copy here of both of their letters. Yeah. Yeah. The, the owner of principal yeah. signed it, so you know I doubt he can sign anything without having it looked at. So, Solicitor Brand, you're saying that you did get two written contracts back, the same type document that was given to Mr. Price? Mm -hmm. yeah. Can council as a whole get a copy of those two? Council review? request it. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to request that council as a whole be provided. Council as a whole wants it. They uh, hmm. the project of the council. It's really yeah, yeah, it's not. This, this well, was just my to validate. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. offered but the thing is, I think right. in hindsight, if you come to me and say, "Hey, I want to take this sound down, sign down, repaint it. The holes are there. You're going to take it, paint it, put it back in." Right. And that you should have followed through with her or whoever to see if there was going to be any zoning issues because now you're kind of putting it back on him. And it's 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 a memorial for this family. It needs to go back up. The borough just bought five acres down there in the swamp and fill it in or something and put it on the borough property. Well, and the sign needs to go back up. I, I agree with you 100%. And when Brian went and signed this, I went to the fire company. And I said, if Brian doesn't go through with this, can we erect it on your property at the edge of town? And the fire company said, no problem. We would love to have that sign. Well, we're not going to do it if these stipulations in because we're, we're not taking ownership of it. So The borough owns land down there. They can own it then. It was your idea. Now we got to do something. All right. All right. Well, Ryan, we'll look into that situation, see what we can do for you, and can some way we get, get back to you. In the meantime, is it going to hurt anybody to hang that sign back up? Well, right now they're in the process of doing the one up here. The ground is a little wet. You know, it has a little quite a bit. So that's, you know. I don't have a problem with somebody putting a sign back up. I'll tell as you, long as it's okay I with could Brian. handle, no, you can't go on somebody's property without written permission. Without permission. That's what the agreement is for. Mm -hmm. And that's fine, but I will not sign <laughs> that agreement because it said the erections of sign, that's a new construction of sign. Years ago. And I could be elaborate for a permit. I understand that, but we didn't do from it. From so DP, not getting a permit with. Staff. I'm not arguing that case, Debbie. I just. For our people to put it back up, we would have to have permission to go on. So then your people don't need to put it up. Somebody else can put it up. I'm leaving it in Dean's hand because he's the one. Can somebody else put it up? I would guess. I don't see why somebody else no. can. I did offer to pick the sign up. I have numerous volunteers that will be right there to help. We got that sign up in no time. Like I said, I just didn't want any recourse. Was the proper permitting came up from DEP to put that sign back up? Because it does say erection of new sign. We should have been permitted for that. Even though it's existing sign, it's right in here, erection of sign. And that is construction of new sign. We went that through, is liable to DEP. Well, we went to the proper channels with PennDOT. You did? Yes. We have permits for that. We don't have them yet, no. And that was what's well, going to be the next thing mm -hmm. I spoke to is, while it might be grandfathered in, PennDOT has since come forward with a new permitting process, and all three of those have to be permitted whether they were in there before or not. That's PennDOT's guidelines. And I am working on that currently. And DEP did send the permits up? I right didn't there? speak to DEP. I spoke to PennDOT. So who, who would be having to pay under that contract for the permits? I believe the borough was going to yeah. take on that yeah. responsibility. Okay. I'm saying, I, right here in front of her, I give permission for the sign to go back up on my property. As long as there's no recourse, no fine comes in surprisingly like before. And let's say DEP should have already been notified and everything. That's apparently what that was in the paperwork. That the permits have already been already granted. I've not yeah, communicated with DEP. Yeah, the old side. Yeah, you old side. Any, any, I'm listening. Do you have any idea how much those permits are? I don't. Per sign. Because we have to go through and get the right of way for each spot because it varies per location. And that's what I'm working on. They sent me the wrong right of way first. So I went back to get the correct one. And it's no difference if you look at the Welcome to Canton sign. I don't know if the fire department one is permitted, but they all have PennDOT numbers on them, and that's required now for anything that's basically promoting off-premise is what it's called. Even for existing, because it is an existing sign, they, not new erection. Even existing ones that came through, they made them permit them standing there. Those Welcome to Canton signs have been there, and they now have the PennDOT per numbers on them, and we didn't even change those, so yes. Could you let me know? I can keep in touch with you when, when that 
cost. Is that all? Because I really think our family should be taking care of them. Uh, yeah, that's right. all. I just, you, you know, know, I said, signs are okay going back up one time. No one Thank I, 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 you for coming. I don't want to sign the paperwork. I don't agree with that. I agree with you. There should be nothing signed. I'm sorry, but okay. Thank you, Brian. Anybody else? <clears throat> Angela Jackson, 82 North Washington Street, Canton. Um, rumors are, and I'm a business owner, so rumors are flying around something to do with parking and not parking on the streets. And I would just like to clarify or find out from you personally what the parking situation is, because I have so many clients coming to me worried that they're going to park on the street and get towed away. And I said, wait. I will go find out what's going on with the parking situation. I believe we have not done nothing with that. We have not had a meeting to discuss the parking issue for on street parking at, at the present time. But once we do, um, we will make sure everybody is notified of the outcome. Um, my personal opinion, um, if it goes to a vote, I'm going to vote no because I believe that a lot of these places, and I know exactly where you live. Um, for, as far as parking, I'm going to vote no. I will, and that's why I'm going to vote. It's not. It's not right. Well, and also, may I have permission to possibly put two cones at the end of my driveway to keep the church people from parking across my driveway? Does the council have any objection to that? I mean, your property, you, you can do whatever you want. Well, yeah, because you've got to leave. As long as they're in your driveway. Yeah, I've got to leave, and there's yeah. a dang yeah. car no, sitting. I don't know if it belongs as to As long as it's on your property, church. yes, you may put okay, two cones there. I didn't want to do it without make, checking in, making sure. and. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank right, you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Well, so. This may be a great example of what people, the problems people have been having. Um, I made, after the April 8th meeting, a records request for that um, copy of the official complaint form that was discussed at the meeting um, for making complaints. Yeah, you yeah, brought it up and asked that if it could be sent out. Sounded like it could be sent out to people if they need, needed to make a complaint. So I made that request on the 9th. On the 16th, I was told that she would need an extension of 30 days before she could decide whether or not she could send it out to me. Uh, on May 9th, I was told I was denied access to that sheet, that nobody is permitted to have it, um, because it is a note or working paper for a public official. Doesn't say which public official. Um, equivalent to a telephone messaging slip, a routing slip, or any materials that do not have an official purpose. Um, people have been having problems for a very long time with trying to get permits, trying to open up their businesses, everything. And it has always been, sorry if I'm not very articulate, I'm trying to find the right words. It, it's always been coming back. Well, you got to do this. Well, never mind. No, sorry. You got to do this instead. No, you can't do that with no explanation of why they can't do it. Okay. Um, and it's it's a problem for everybody. It has been for a long time. I hear a lot of complaints about it. A business is trying to open up in Canton right now. They're two weeks waiting to try to confirm whether or not they need a permit or not when there was already a permit on the window of the building saying the building could be used for that type of business. It has been for 20, 30 years. And it's ridiculous. Nobody wants to start a business here. Oh, I totally agree. Nobody wants to move here. I know people have turned down houses. There are great prices in the borough because they don't want to have to deal with having to get a permit to add additional stuff to their roof and then find out later they never needed a permit. Um, case after case of, I didn't need a permit, but I did it anyways because I didn't want to have to deal with the, the work of trying to prove that I didn't need the permit. And like, I requested the permits fees. 
haven't gotten those. No response at all. I have to appeal to the state to enforce a response to those. Um, it, it's it's ridiculous. And this is a real good example of something very simple. It, nobody can make a complaint without the complaint form, I'm guessing. And we're told, no, you're not allowed to hire. That's yes, right. Um, I don't want to brought that up, and I'll tell yeah. you. I can probably look back and find my minutes, but I was not at council at the time. And I think we had a fire uh, hall meeting, committee meeting down there. And I asked the council, they sit in front of me, I said, this can't borrow complaint form. When Michael Schultz addressed it, he suggested that the complaint form be put on when we had our website. Mm -hmm. And each council member be given two copies of the official complaint form. I wasn't on council. I don't know what they were for. I looked at council. I says, show me by a raise of hands how many of you people have complaint form in your possession. Have two in your possession. They all just sit there and look at it. I take that. Nobody has it, correct? Yes. Correct. We don't have it. So if council can't get one, yeah, and, and this, <laughs> look, is, this but is I not got one. <clears throat> Because I brought it up at a meeting, and I learned about the okay. complaint form. She emailed it to me. Once I had that Microsoft document, then I would reuse it. Because I filled out my fair share of right no requests. Yeah. Because I wanted to see the meeting minutes. And then I was asked, what are you looking for, Mr. Coble? Public record, sir. The minutes aren't posted on our web page. Why? Look at TroyBurrow.org. I've said this before. Yeah. Look at Blossburg.org. It's on the minutes. They're all Everything's posted. Can't yeah. high school. I know we're not a high school, but the thing is transparency. People, what are we hiding from people? They need to know what's going on in this community. Well, Brian, one thing you can do is have a policy, and that's something the board can consider is to actually uh, have a meeting, or, or at least a committee meeting, and develop a policy. And then from the policy, you can cre create and craft a, um, a complaint form. There is one, because Michael Schultz told that lady, it was over an incident at the camp pool, if you want to file an official one complaint of the problem, form. One of the, pro hold on. one of the problems you have, though, you don't have the policy. It seems to me you'd have, you'd, the borough council should put a policy. Listen, you're a member of council, so you can do this. And, uh, and put together a policy. And once you have a policy, you can create a complaint form. Hold, fact, hold on. Put, hold on. No, it's not. Yeah. Let me finish. And I th you kind of put the card out of uh, the horse here. I think that council, it's my advice, if council wants to do this, is that they should probably put some sort of policy in and we can do it. It's an elected okay. member of council. That's fair. And once you have that policy, then you might very well be able to create a uh, you know your own complaint form. And then you'd have it. So right. it seems to me that might be the, the better course. This, this that's is, point. that's all completely moot because this does not say that one does not exist. That's what I would have received if Do one did exist. Uh, well, here's the thing, Mr. Solicitor. One exists. Our council president, we look to him for leadership and guidance. He's the one that made this statement, okay? He's been on council for 12 years and been on president. They removed the sitting president and brought him in, made him president okay. again. Right. I have a loss of confidence in the individual. I'm sorry. Well, he doesn't. Have, he's one. But one he member. shouldn't be he's telling us. Voting, he's one voting member. Now he can't say. Listen, if you want to, I mean, maybe have a, uh, have a special meeting, have a. Uh, a we'll meeting. have one. And, but we don't have to rely on the president to do that. You but we do. We look to him for guidance. You know why? Right. Because he sat right there and told us this is going to the court of common pleas. He's sitting two feet from you, sir. If he wasn't sure, right. he should have looked right. at you and All asked right. for you yeah. for guidance. Right. This is something we do every seven, right. so let's, seven years. Okay? It's All in right. the minutes. So There's an right. official let's, record. Let's I'll show you. Wait. There's one more thing I'd okay. like to bring up. Um, on April 17th, there was a meeting here around 7.30 p.m. of the chamber. Um, yeah, I figured, yeah, there was. Uh, I'm just saying, there, there yeah, was a meeting. I was going to say, it's not us, but okay. Um, so when I came in and got my last records request, I asked whether or not this room could be rented out, any room can be rented out. I was told no. Um, so a private organization that's not a governmental organization is getting to utilize this building after hours that nobody else is permitted to utilize. Um, was a staff member here? in their official duties were they getting paid is the chamber reimbursing what 
I mean, that's a huge issue, especially since the chamber has their own building. And then you look at the agenda, they're, they're on the agenda. And the Rialto's on the agenda. What other organizations are permitted to get on the agenda for their, somebody's having a sale, can they put their sales on the agenda? It shouldn't be like that. Uh, other organizations shouldn't be getting their, I mean, somebody could come in here and complain for three minutes about a movie playing at the Rialto because it's on the agenda. That extra fluff, it maybe is a paper handed to the board saying this is the stuff that's happening in our community, but it should not be on the agenda because if you're picking and choosing who gets to be on the agenda, you start running afoul and you may get into a lawsuit where an organization comes in and says, hey, we want to be on the agenda. And they get told no. Or they say, we want to come in and use this building after hours for free with a staff member here for free, just like the chamber does, and gets told no. That could be a lawsuit. And it could be a big lawsuit. And I, I think these things should be looked at and addressed. And just going back to my uh, records request, the person that would know whether or not that official form exists is sitting right there and the board could ask and they need to answer that question um, instead of trying to speculate if the form exists or not. So does one those exist, Amy? I will be addressing that with counsel and appreciate it. She does not wish to answer whether or not the official form exists in public. Right. Right. So I answer. Does that mean no? But why? But why does it made? have to be addressed in a different date? Why can't we get the answer? Right? I will be addressing that with counsel today. Well, it sounds like we need to talk to the charge. solicitor. You know, it sounds like we need to talk to the solicitor. You know, like he said, get a policy. No, but it looks like a policy exists, and no, policy we can't be entirely exist. sure because we can't get answers. Okay. Policy doesn't exist. And I'm gonna we'll get we'll get a we'll get a special meeting. We'll so, have a policy in order. So if somebody has a complaint and they put it down on paper and bring it down here, it goes in the garbage because it's no, not on a no. I'm, any complaints brought in are will be accepted and distributed as necessary. Okay. It, it, Who decides that? Okay. I mean, typically they would come to me and I would disperse it to whomever it's about. I, Who it's about? Never thrown a complaint away if that's what I'm saying. I didn't mean you, Debbie. I didn't mean you. I didn't mean that. I just All right. mean that. I just no, I know. A complaint can come in on a regular piece of paper. That okay. is fine. Okay. Yes. yes. Well, uh, Alex Schrader, um, Schrader Property, the 104 East 2nd Street, and I'm going to go to work. Um, I want to start out. I, want, I do want to thank council members. I know this is volunteer, and this is a lot of conflict, a lot of turmoil. I know it takes a lot to, to sit down and, uh, and and go through this. Um, so I do want to thank you guys for your time initially, because this is. I mean, there's a lot. Um, but just to, to to bring about a couple points that I've some issues that I've had. Um, I really would like to try to see in the future if we could maybe sit down and discuss. Um, I've said it in the past, the way that we communicate with the residents, we didn't always find with no warnings. And I know that's, that's kind of been shot down in the past, but I really would like you know that to be reconsidered because I think that you know it really just sends a, a bad message to a lot of the residences. And so I think that if we could eliminate some of those means of communication, and try to, you know, rethink how we're communicating because I think it goes a long way. I, I know just talking to residences, um, myself included, that it, it just it it really put a sour taste in people's mouth within the borough. And I think codes in general, um, you know, I think we should really sit down and, and you know, what, in whatever committee meeting we need to do this in and look at what we can do to eliminate the unnecessary and you know if, if the state does not mandate it you know do we really need it as a borough um because in, in you know i think we all know that not every single borough has the same code the same ordinances and so on and i know that's a lot of work i do and i, I want to thank you guys for, for for that because this isn't as easy as boom but I just I do plead to you guys that this is a I, I believe a necessary thing in order to see positive change because I the way that we 
been communicating with residences has not been, in my opinion, very good. And whether that be in an official manner or, or on the side, and I, uh, I really just urge everybody to think about what's important, to use that common sense, and if we see things that, hey, this is something we can eliminate because it, it's not really doing the residences any good. There's a lot of people that really would put some money, put some time into the town, um, but it is it is difficult and it's some, at times scary because the the uh, you're, you're kind of worried about what else might come up and you're worried about having a borough that may not want to work with you or makes you feel as if they don't want to work with you. And so I, that's what I'd like to bring about tonight. And I just you know again with parking issues and so on, we really had no information given. Um, so if we could really take that time, get whatever committee meeting we need to have set. Um, the residences need to, to have a finality to this and have an end to it because, to my understanding, there's no ordinance, there's no draft of an ordinance, there's nothing. No, right, no, I agree, I agree with you. So if, 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 if there's nothing, we have eliminated parking, um, and I, I, I'm, I'm parking there now. Okay. So just so everybody's aware. Point of information for yes, what right. he's saying. Do we need a policy for to, to work with the public on this, or, or is this something? I think the information part comes down to the guys building the website and that would help get more information out to make permits readily available to them on the website. But he's asking for like a warning that would be before a getting a sweet meeting. ticket. Yes. Sweet ticket. Yeah. But that would be taken up at the committee meetings, Brian, yeah. which are public, so the public can attend. Yeah, is that it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So once, I'm the head of the codes, um, so once we get things squared away, me and John can meet, sit down and have a meeting, um, it will be put in the paper. I will make sure it's put in the paper so and the input from the resident to the borough may attend. Oh, I really appreciate that. Okay. So I make a motion to commit to have a, this meeting. Yeah, somebody should. We will, Brian. Wait here, sir. Okay, any other visitors? I have a couple of questions. Yes. Sherry Lambert, um, what is the name of the engineering firm that <clears throat> it's been looking at the pool? That I can't tell you because I have not been informed of it. That's between Brett and Amy. Brett, I can't remember know? the name of it off the top of my head. I don't have that information. Can you email me. it to me? I guess. I mean, we haven't hired them yet. That's just yeah. somebody we've been talking to. Right. They were out twice to look no, at the pool. No, they were out once. once. And we don't have, it'll go to a committee meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you can get me the name of them. And um, I've been hearing a lot with the pool. Looks like it's closing. For this year and won't be open to help the families and the kids and maybe try to come up with a resolution um if there's any way because a lot can't afford to put their own pool up or you know get the kids to a different area for a pool if there's any way maybe the borough could check with the school and have a school bus and arrange to pick up kids and families at the pool and take them maybe up to troy for an hour or two to at least get them out swimming there's so many kids i hear are really missing the pool and now it's the second year um so that's just an idea to something on that order could be worked out um to get them to a different pool if we can't open our pool um and also has any, any money ever been received from a gas company i've heard there was like seven hundred some thousand dollars given a couple of years ago for the pool we received five thousand dollars quite a few years ago from talisman um, that was for something specific. I can't remember off the top of my head what that was. We have never received anything in the hundreds of thousands from anyone. Okay. And were the grants checked into that the commissioner's office has said it, they have available? I have a response to that later on. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? I do apologize. I have one quick, quick real okay. I forgot. And, uh, Sherry just brought about the pool, and I, this may not be something that can even be done, but my question would be, I know there's some nonprofit organizations that would be willing to take the pool over, and, and I don't know all the numbers involved in what our losses are on the pool. You, honestly, you don't want to know what okay. the losses are. So my question is, because, I mean, this is currently borough property, correct? Correct. So if we were able to do that, allow a nonprofit, I would imagine there might even be more grant opportunities for them. And we can, I'm sure we can put that into deeds like a specific mm -hmm. use to where if it ever, you know, they can't come in, tear the pool out, you know, if it reverts to any other use, it would, you know, go back on the borough. But if we could do that, were that, 
I do know there are multiple nonprofit organizations that would be very interested in taking that over. So if that's something that could be entertained. That would have to be, David could answer your question. Okay. I don't think they could be and then it's in the park. And we've already got the grants for the basketball court going okay. and the pickleball yep. court. And well, and I wasn't sure what the logistics, but I just thought, man, if, if something like that yeah, could be done. Yeah, I don't done, know if we could just subdivide off the pool from that area. Yeah. yeah. Oh, if, if there was in some way, it, you know, it, it, if mm -hmm. that we could turn that from a negative into maybe a taxable, mm -hmm. you know, bringing in some, some taxes. Well, it would well, be taxable the, uh, if it was a non-profit. Recreation committee. It was a non-profit. And then you can bring it back to council and let us know if you want to talk to Solicitor Brain about it, see if it's feasible, not feasible. Yeah. It's, right. it's information that's already on a pending yeah. agenda for when we have a meeting. Yeah, okay. okay. Nobody else? Uh, let's do the new council person Sorry. hold the office. Wait a second. Okay. okay. Just right. a couple of quick questions. Can we get a time frame on putting the sign up? Weather pending, just two weeks, three weeks, just so it's going back up. We do it. I, I thought we, we just said we were not going to do it. Right. Well, okay, it's a burrow not going to put it back up. Can I pick the sign up and get it put up? You know, I'm just. So, I think we have yeah. to relay back to PennDOT because mm -hmm. they've been working with us on the the permit. So I think. I don't think we can commit to that, Dean and my, David. Am I correct? Until we have some answers. Well, there's right? one already up. There's one already up. Because we have a signed agreement and the permit paperwork is in with PennDOT. That's in the township. It, it doesn't matter where they are. I don't think we have the answers to answer that tonight. Yeah. I'd like copy of the permitting when it gets here, also because the landlord just put on my file, if that's possible. Um, Okay, that's it. All right, thank you, Brian. Yep. Okay, uh, Council, oath of office. Dean. Deanna, you can come up here by the flag of Dean. Please, you solemnly swear that I will support, obey, and defend. Do you solemnly swear that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States? The Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth. And the Constitution of this Commonwealth. And that I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. And that I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all of your financial reports are in your packets through the end of April for all funds. If you have any questions on them, you can let me know. Your zoning report for April is in there, as well as your right to know report. There's nothing new to report at this time on the sidewalk loan or grant program. I did speak to the county grants coordinator and nobody has committed in any applications and we haven't had any for our in-house loan program. Um, Earth Day cleanup was held on Saturday, April 20th. I'd like to thank the 17 volunteers who participated and we cleaned approximately two and a half to three miles of streets along with Morse Arboretum and Ray, thank you to the fire department for participating as well. Yes, sir. Appreciate that. Um, spring cleanup is scheduled for the week of May 20th, next week, Monday through Thursday. The cost is $70 per truck load with a $10 free line charge. Real Disposal Services LLC is one of our garbage companies in the borough. Um, they have been sold to Real Disposal Environmental Services, so we need to do a new contract um, that needs to be approved but it's keeping the same dates as the existing contract, so it'll be kept in line with all of our other contracts. So I would need a motion for the garbage. So we have a motion for the new real disposal. So I move to uh, have a new contract for real disposal environmental services. Need a second, please. Second. David. <clears throat> Roll call. Neely. Aye. Colville. Aye. Watkins. 
I would abstain. I have a That's fine. That's Jennings. Fine. Aye. Preston. Aye. Williams. Aye. Thank you. There's an exoneration list in your packets um, from collecting $135 in 2024 occupation. It actually says 2023 at the top, but I verify that Gary's left-handed it's a 2024 exoneration. Can you make a motion? We have a motion to accept the exoneration list, please. I'll make a motion to accept the occupation uh, per the list provided to council list. Second, please. I'll second. Thank you. Roll call. Preston. Aye. Lockton. Yes. Williams. Aye. Jennings. Aye. Neely. Aye. Coble. Aye. Thank you. Um, I have met a couple times with gentleman your council person Julian Ziegler about the website. We talked to a couple individuals regarding some information the same, and we will continue to work on that to provide council back some additional information in a future meeting. Um, would like to clarify a couple things from last month. Um, after Councilman Jennings spoke about his conversation with Commissioner McFinkel at the April meeting about how I basically ignored him with regard to money available for the pool, I did call and speak personally to Commissioner McFinkel the next day, as well as speaking to him at a meeting out of that within the following week. Um, Commissioner McClinko advised me that he did speak to Councilman Jennings, but he did not state that I had ever ignored him. Um, he and I both recalled our conversation, which was actually a few years ago, if not recently, because the status of the pool at the time was unknown due to the lack of applications we felt it wasn't in the best interest to accept any money until there was an actual use because i didn't want that to hurt us in a future request if i was just sitting on money as opposed to using it mm -hmm. i have also provided council with a copy of Forbes <coughs> article entitled how much does it cost to pay the driveway in 2024 this too was mentioned at the april 8th council meeting and I just wanted you to have the full article so that you could have the complete information regarding cost, uh, which actually vary from 2100 to 7800 being the top <coughs> the average. In your packets for um, correspondence, you have the statement of financial interest terms for who may first and I can speak to you about your what was on top. Thank you. The PSAV update and the upcoming equipment show in August, which is for graduate in Cuyahoga County. And that is all that I have at this time. All right. Very good. Thanks. <coughs> uh, council has the police report uh, for the month. Um, ordinance number, the uh, motor vehicle ordinance has been tabled to the police. Um, myself and Chief Sealy uh, interviewed the Caleb and the own for the position of part-time police officer for the borough of Canton. Um, we have both spoke with the rest of the police committee about this, and we're all in agreement that we would recommend uh, Mr. Brown to the council um, as a part-time police officer, uh, pending paperwork and background references. In, in motion. Do I have a motion, please? I see who's, is he already a current officer somewhere? Or um, is he he is already Act 120 certified. Okay. He was an officer in the Valley. Okay. Uh, he was a part time officer. Um, Sierra did a waiver with your part time officers. We were all full time. He lost his position. Okay. So, Caleb okay. Brown. Yep. What, what's his wages? 1681. And what's our full time rate? Uh, 18 to a little more than that, depending on years of service. I'll make a motion that we hire Mr. Brown. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. Pending paperwork mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. background references. Back. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, any discussion? Any discussion? Mm -hmm. I would just ask mm -hmm. we already have two new officers, right? We're bringing on another officer. Do you have a time frame of like, is he going to spend so much time with Doug, so much time with Trent, get some training, or we're we just going to have trainees, training, trainees? That's what they did with the other one. What? Yeah. What did they do? Oh, okay. So yeah, that's are, it. Uh, everybody's involved. Yeah. With it, yeah. yeah, we are getting training with both. Trent okay, and so he, he he'll be getting. Yeah. And then he has a time frame, I believe, maybe or not. Did, 
before they can. He's already um, asked. Sir. When well, when Chief Sealy feels that he's okay, ready to be released from training, right? Then he Chief Sealy will get a hold of Tony and we'll release him from training. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. So we have a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah we can. Can we go? Okay. Need a roll call. Yep. Watkins? Yes. Uh-uh. Neely? Aye. Kogel? Aye. Williams? Aye. Preston? Aye. Jennings? No. And then just under the parades, um, I did get an application from the VFW for the Memorial Day parade. Um, we do need to approve that for PennDOT. So I would need a motion. I'd like a motion. Yeah. No second. What time did they put down on that, Amy? I think it's 10, like normal, if All I'm right. not mistaken. I can double check it, Ray. I'll let you know if it's any different. All right. I'm pretty sure it's fine. Roll call. Uh, Williams. Aye. Preston. Aye. Neely. Aye. Cole. Aye. Watkins. Jim. Aye. I have a couple issues. Can I talk about them or not without them being on the uh, agenda? That was brought to my attention. Is something that has to do with it. Well, it's already been to you, and you haven't done nothing about it. So, I mean, something's got to be done. I'm sorry, Dean, but something has to be done. With you just saying that I'll take care of it and nothing becomes of it, um, something has to be done. It's personnel or something that should go to the committee. It's not personal. Well, it kind of is, it is, but it is. <coughs> I have to kind of figure like it. Be an executive might, session. That might be an Okay, well, let's take it in executive session then. Time done. Okay. I have a question though. Didn't Mr. Seely say before nothing can go to an executive session? He submitted paperwork from John Robbins. Well, I, 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 I called and, and asked for executive session. He has a paper that he can submit prior to the end of the meeting if he wishes to, Brian. Oh, to withdraw that? No, he has a paper that he can submit at each meeting if he wishes to. So he can decide between now and the executive session if he wants it in the open session or the, the executive. That's his choice. So I guess, to be fair, Solicitor Brand, if he submitted one previously and never withdrew that or said no. he doesn't want that no. done. That would be, that would be you, you, if you did it, you'd have to do it each meeting. Oh, that only that, was for that, one that meeting? Was, well, yes. I mean, you, if, you, uh, if you wanted to have another executive session uh, today, then he'd have to produce a new letter for, for an executive the session letter. to today. Yeah. Or the same letter again. I think they're dated, so probably, oh, probably a new one. You probably need a new one with a different date without a uh, contemporary. You're session. on the record saying, well, we've done down this road before when the previous man wanted to speak about it, and you said that we can't. It's got to go. To. I'm on the record for saying what? I thought, Doug, did, what was your paper you submitted, Doug? Was it saying that you it's did submitted want? submitted each meeting. We have both submitted them. What, what was it when you submitted it? What did it state? It just states that he wishes to have it, or I, whomever, whichever. It can be any employee that submits it. Okay. And it's that they there's a portion of the um, Sunshine Law that allows it to be discussed in the open session. And it's the employee's choice at that time. Okay. I didn't know it only was from one particular meeting. I thought it carried through because I asked that question at the webinar. I don't recall the question being asked, so I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Street Department, three and forty for April. Council has a report in front of them. <clears throat> um, also, um, we're looking at hiring a part-time man. Um, Amy can uh, tell you uh, about the man. His application, everything was turned in. Um, John Goldman the third um, submitted an application to be a part-time employee for the summer. That is the only application received. Um, and if he were hired, it would be at the rate of 10.77 an hour. And I believe he would start the first part of June, right? Yeah, Monday. Yeah. <coughs> Is that the teacher? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion to hire Mr. Bowman as a part-time seasonal employee. Okay. There's, there's a second. Roll call. Who seconded? Brett. Thank you. No discussion? Any discussion on it? When, how long is the seasonal employee? Just, a, just whenever school would go start. back to start. Uh, he go back to school. Usually it's a student, so normally yeah. it would be when they go back to school. So in his case, I'm assuming when he goes back to school, <laughs> it's for different reasons. <laughs> 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 
Uh, Roll call. Jenny. Yes. William. Yes. Preston. Yes. Neely. Yes. Watkins. Yes. Coble. Aye. Street sweeping. There's an old street sweeper. Right. Originally, we had uh, talked to council about putting the, uh, the old street sweeper on uh, uh, this a bit and uh, talking to uh, talking to um, the lady when I was at Frank's uh, thing there. I spent a good bit of time talking to the lady from Nissabid, and the price that we have on that is way over what it will ever even get close to bringing. She suggested to me the best thing to do is, because I explained to her the money and the time that we put into it, she suggested to me to put it where we get our money back. Okay. So talking to other people, um, I suggested starting price is $8,000. Hope we get 10, but $8,000 will move it. It'll get it away from us, but right now it's just right in our way. Yeah, it's, it's not in the way, it's just rusting away, right. right in the way. So, and the last amount was 20,000, <coughs> if you want to change the amount. Yeah. She said, we'll, we'll never get it. So what you're saying is start at 10 and go as low as 8 then? Is that what you're saying? Start, start, start at 8. Okay. Yes, yeah, start at 8. Council have any objectives of starting at 8 and we need to get rid of it? Motion. Start at 8. Do you want to second it? Roll call. Coble. Aye. Williams. Aye. Neely. Aye. Jennings. Aye. Watkins. Yes. Preston. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Recreation. All right. So we were kind of discussing the uh, War Memorial Pool. Um, we did decide that it's not going to open for the 2024 season. Um, I can say it's pretty much it's in disarray. Uh, we have spoke to an engineering firm to get pool drawings sent out to them um, and then some kind of ideas of what we want to do moving forward, how we want to either redo the pool or <coughs> minimize the pool and put in a splash pad or something else. Those or what we have to decide whether or not we want to retain the engineering firm to do that. Like Amy said, they were nice enough to come out for free, look at the pool, tell us what it needs. Um, it needs a bunch of internal work. The decking is gone. The splash pad for the kids is pretty much broke. The concrete's broke down. Um, so that would all need to be replaced and completely redone. About the only thing that's still good down there is the pump system under the pool. And that's pretty much it. All the cast iron pipe under there is all rotting out. Um, so it needs a lot of work or completely redone. So you're making a pump work, there's no place to pump it to. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a big fountain. So. The, structure, the structure of that pool is very dangerous now. Yeah. I mean, you, you put the amount of pressure, 168,000 gallons in that, and you think about when I have to crawl around on the inside of that, and you see the water leaking through all the cracks that you're walking down, going down through there. And that's not, it's not good. It's been that way for several years. And the pool and keeps getting worse. Yeah, mm -hmm. the pool decking, all the concrete slabs that are down there, they're what, six by six? Well, they're and they're, they're four inches all, thick. And they're, yeah, and they're all the deck top of the deck. So yeah. it's, oh. it, it's unsafe. It's very well, uneven surfaces. You have four so. inches of concrete on top of that. So if you take that deck off, you have to lower everything down. Yeah, to go back. Oh boy. So it's pretty much is we got to make a decision: is the pool going to be worth fixing or just completely replacing it? And then we look at what we've lost over the past three years, and is it even worth bringing it back? But we do know that the people want it. Um, we just we look at our losses, and they're I would say astronomical for what we lose out of the pool. So. And it's not just that, but if you look at the attendance too, people can say they want it, but if you look at our past few years attendance records, they are considerably lower as well. So that would have to be taken into consideration too. Could it be scaled down? Would you have to have we, that would be part of what we're doing. We, we, we discussed scaling right? it back, yeah. maybe getting rid of like the deep end. We kind of looked at it because we've had issues with lifeguards in the past and getting them and retaining them. So we got to look at it as if we remove the deep end and the diving board, can we get away from the lifeguards and just do a park, have a splash pad or something like that, just for kids to get wet. So yeah, we wonder what you're getting information on. We're trying to get information on that. The engineering firm came back with some prices um, to start the drawings, and I don't know. I think we might need to look for another engineering firm. I know drawings are expensive. I do it with what I do for a living, but. Uh, if we got to spend it to get the drawings, we got to spend it. So, 
Would it be possible to maybe reach out to Blossboro? I think they redid their. We we have we were oh, okay. we're actually know working with the same engineering firm. Oh, it is. Oh, so the same. Maybe they used a yeah. different. One. Okay, all right. No, That's same sweet. engineering firm. Like I said, they were nice okay. enough to come out, kind of tell us what the pool okay. needs. They came back with drawings, but to sit down and actually scale out what we want. Right, they right, right. Came right. back with pricing, not yeah. drawing. Yeah, yeah, right. pricing yeah. for the drawings. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Yep. Is there money already budgeted for pool? Cleaning? I mean, I budgeted the pool as if it were going to open. Okay. Okay. With a thirty thousand dollar loss. Okay. Ish. Right. I have to look at the Thirty to forty-five. Mm -hmm. Okay, coach. Uh, DCNR. Oh, oh. DCNR grant update. Yeah. So the 2022 grant for the comfort station is currently out to bid. Hopefully, we'll have something to report at the June meeting, and then after we get that one going, I'll start working as a design consultant on the 2023 grant, which is for the basketball court. Thank you. Okay, code report. You have it. Your code reporting the packet. Um, Pretty quiet. I have talked to John about some issues, but other than that, everything seems to be going pretty good. Okay, fire department. Fire report for April. 22 calls for the month of April. 10 of them were Camp Burrows alone. 2024 fire rescue mutual aid agreement, agreement of expectations. So in your packets are the financial reports on the general ledger, which is the report that was required under the borough code. So it has been um, received. I would like to have a motion to sign the contract. I'll make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to sign the contract at the 2024 agreement with the allowments. So can I amend to add words? That's fine. I move to use Act 13 funds to pay the additional $3,314.88 pending the receipt if we have received the itemized list of expenditures and the uh, most current tax form that was asked for. We don't well, have a second on the First Amendment, so I don't know how to second that because I believe we have funds available. If the taxes come in, I think yeah, I would like to it. discuss where the money is coming yeah. from, but you don't have a second on your this motion. Oh, I, I was just I'm I'm sorry, I think okay. I brought a second. It. Thank you. Now we have some discussion before discussion. Even, we can have the amendment. I'll have some discussion first. Is that right? No, yeah, that's right. fine. Yeah, that right? go ahead. Um, I got a copy of your ledger. Thank you very much. Whoever arranged to get that, it's great. It's all we needed. It's by law, we have to get it. I think we ought to probably get it every year so we don't have to worry about whether we need it or not. We have to have it as an entry. But if we got it from, say, the end of August through first, or from August through September every year, or whatever, then we'd have it when we, when we got into budget session, we wouldn't have to worry about it in the future. That just makes sense to me. So I don't need to make that part of it, but that's one thing we ought to consider maybe in the future. Um, but I have some, this is great. I not smart enough to understand it all, so I have some questions, but not that need to be answered before this gets done, but sometime before the next contract maybe, but I think it's great. Um, I signed checks today, so I believe that the checks already been written for the difference between the first, am I right, Amy? The first quarter payment has already been, will be paid. That's correct. That's okay. And I think I looked at the numbers, I think we have enough in our budgeted for the next two payments at least, full payments. So the, we don't have to worry about where the extra money be. If we get enough tax money in, we'll probably have enough in the general fund to make up the difference. Fund, the fire fund. The fire fund, excuse me, to make up the difference from in the fourth quarter also. If we don't, we can address that at the end of the third quarter. So I don't think we need to. Your okay. amendment is going to get me. <coughs> Mike looking at my notes. All right. I'd look at that. But That's they'll be paid in full. I think, like to have written a check dated Thursday, I think. Right. So that will be done. You can take it with you tonight, or we'll mail it, or whatever works yeah. on that. If this motion so passes, still and then we'll make the other payments on time, like yeah. we always have, and come fourth quarter, we'll know where they're going to get the extra money from. So they're going to get the money. There's never a question about the money. We need the form. We have the form here. Comes the money. That's the way I see it. So the only thing I would add is, um, according to the minutes, Cole will move to amend the motion and add pending balance sheet and general ledger 
that the Act 13 funds be reviewed to see if additional money can be funded. Preston verified that the motion was just to investigate, not actually take it. Correct. From there, and another motion was needed to use Act 13 funds for that reason. But so, we don't, but we don't I will need, need until fourth. Can I finish, sir? Please. Try to so that. Are you done? Um, that's the reason I was amending that. Okay. So I withdraw my amendment. amendment. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. No, Go that's fine. Go ahead, Chief. All right. Uh, we need a roll call. Roll call, please. On the contract. Neely. Aye. 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 Watkins. Jennings. Aye. Preston. Aye. Williams. Aye. Um, may I back up to George, your vote? Do you get money out of that budget? Yeah. Should you, David, should he be abstaining? Yeah, if there's a pecuniary gain, any issues that involve this, when I looked up a couple, a couple of months ago. Well, Brett and Brian and, just abstained yeah, for I mean, going to a conference. Well, if there's a direct and immediate pecuniary gain, that's what the that's what the ethics. All says. right, I abstain to make everybody happy. Well, it's not to make us happy. It's it's a it's, 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 it's for your own protection. I, I do. If, if it could be a conflict, it'd probably be. I'd rather see you be safe than sorry. That's just that. Okay, back up generator. Um, <coughs> I would just like a, another motion to authorize me to average or to send that bid out. It's been a bit since we did that as I've been working through the process. And just to make sure there's no confusion, I don't want the state to have an issue with how long that has been. So if we can have a motion to authorize me to bid the grant. Okay, motion, please. I move to uh, rebid the uh, backup generator grant again. Second. Well, it's a bid. I haven't bid it a yet. Bit, yeah, yeah, whatever. Thank you. Whatever you're you're good. Good. <laughs> what you said. <laughs> I got it. Thanks, Ryan. I'll second. Thank you. Roll call. Preston. Aye. Watkins. Yeah. Uh, Williams. Yes. Jennings. Aye. Neely. Aye. Cole. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Hydrant markers. I did receive information from Fire Chief Miller about the hydrant markers. Um, I have also reached out to a local contractor regarding the same due to the, they are pretty expensive. It's going to be over $2,000 and I can get them locally from Bradco's at a little bit lesser of a cost. So I probably will be ordering them from them, right? All right. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Wednesday yeah. night, bingo. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, fair is going to be June. 20, or June 18th to the 22nd. Uh, the new rescue truck, the, uh, they went down this past weekend and did the final at, in Sparta, New Jersey. We're awaiting the closing <coughs> with the Department of Ag. So within two, three weeks, hopefully we'll take delivery of it. Uh, and we were talking, Rich and I were talking that uh, we would like to have someone else appointed to the fire board, someone who's not a fire member or the mayor, to be sitting on the fire board. One of the other council members. So it would either be Dave, Deanna, Joy, or Brian. Or Brian. Mike can do that with the next meeting. Ray, what did you say that you were waiting on from the Department of Ag? I apologize. Uh, it's I just it. the closing date. Oh, okay. I yeah. just didn't hear it. Yep. I'm sorry. Just closing date. Yep. Okay. Emergency management. Um, you got your reports there in your folders? Nothing related. I didn't have a report actually yeah. this week. Oh, okay. We didn't really have one. Solicitor's report? Uh, nothing to report. Mayor's remarks? Uh, I would just like to say I, I appreciate everybody showing up. Uh, and I appreciate the civil manner in which everything is taken care of tonight. Whether we agree or disagree, that's the American way. <laughs> yeah. But I appreciate everybody being civil. Thank you. Junior council person program, eh? I don't have anything. Just give me it. General information. Uh, March 25th minutes from the COD meeting are in your pockets. Uh, we did receive our Tree City USA status again for this 
for last year and a presentation will be made in a future meeting. And as far as the other categories, I just list the events that are going on for everybody to see. So hopefully they will support them. Yeah, we go to the order. Uh, the next meeting will be June 10th, held here at the John Mosser Municipal Building. Uh, there will be an executive session. Hold on. Do you want uh, executive or out here? Okay. What you want? Executive. Okay. I doubt there'll be any action taken, but we'll see what happens. You guys can go out the lobby and stay or you guys can leave and come back when we're done. Please and thank you.